Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Is this thing even on? I can't do this without Gobby always telling me to go. That's how I know to start the show. He's got to say go. I'm just... And go. Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. This is Jerry. This is not actually the Board Game Snobs podcast because it's just me in self-isolation, quarantine, as anybody who needs to shelter at home should be. Anyways, uh, let's continue on with my ramblings. This is not our 100th show. and It's probably going to be more about what's going on with me rather than board games, but I'll try to keep it board game centered. Uh, Like most of you, probably, having to have drastic changes in your life. And uh, doing your best to follow the shelter at home or social distancing that's being encouraged. I have found myself not frequenting uh, public places as often as I normally would. And one of the places I am no longer going to during this time of epidemic uh, issues is the liquor store. And so I am out of alcohol. Woe is me. When I say alcohol, I mean real alcohol. I don't have any whiskey. Uh, Fortunately, back in the very back of my liquor cabinet, because that's what all self-respecting people have, is a liquor cabinet to store all your uh, issues, I found a bottle, an old bottle of sake. Fuji green apple flavored sake. I don't know where this came from. I don't know why I would have bought it, nor why I would chose to have put it in the very back. But anyways, that's what I'm on now. So hard times. Yay. So anyways, that's really not a problem. I enjoy it. And so I'm doing my best, as should you be, to be keeping your distance. Uh, Alcoholic beverage made by fermenting rice. That's what sake is. I didn't know that. Unlike wine, which alcohol is produced by fermenting sugar that is naturally present in fruits, sake is produced by a brewing process more akin to that of beer, where starch is converted into sugar, which ferments into alcohol. Very interesting. I'm I'm coming to enjoy sake. It's nice. It's good. Really good. Anyways, here recently I've been talking about some of the games I've been playing, one of which I have delved deeper into is a game that came out last year Pax Transhumanity, which I can't remember which one of the Ucklands made it. I believe it was Matt. There's Matt Uckland and Phil Uckland. Phil Uckland's the dad, and he is an aerospace engineer, rocket scientist. He's kind of a he's kind of a neat guy, I guess. And he's the head of Sierra Madre Games and the designers of games such as High Frontier, which is like the big space game that I have yet to ever play. Pax Perfuriana. Pax Premier, Pax Renaissance, things of that nature. I believe him and Cole Worley got together and made Pax Premier the third edition, if I'm not mistaken, which I kickstarted and I'm looking forward to. Anyways, his son Matt has done some playtesting and designs himself, and Pax Transhumanity is his game. Pax Transhumanity is a weird game. Very, very weird. One, it's heavy. Uh, on BGG, it has a weight of 4.27. And it looks to be a simple card game. Matter of fact, it's labeled as being an economic game, which it very, very much is. You are a, uh, I guess, a big picture entrepreneur who is trying to have humanity progress and solve the big world issues going on. And there's four sp- spheres that are put out before you, areas for which you can try, try to solve area uh, various ideas, implement ideas in these spheres from the various marketplaces. And so the game is so complicated, I don't even know where to begin to try to explain it. But essentially, you are trying to purchase these cards from this market and turn them into patents to commercialize them, so to speak. And this causes, of course, shifts in the in the world, as new ideas are introduced to the world. 
and the game can end several different ways, and then it scores several different ways, and and you can see just by the stress in my voice that this game really is a 4.27 out of 5 on the BGG complexity rating. It deserves that rating. It does, however, have an interesting solo mode for which I have been playing. I've yet to get to play the game with another person because, like I said, it's social distancing. Gobby's not around. I am dreading, dreading teaching this game to Gobby. I can tell you right now, he is probably not going to like this game. But I've been wrong in the past. Not often, though. Pax Transhumanity is like a puzzle. A very difficult puzzle that you're not quite sure what you're trying to piece together. It is a very interconnected, complex way. A very, a very interconnected way of playing the game. Everything in this game interconnects. And so you really have to think ahead. Each and every move you make has to be calculated because money, which is also used as your workers, everything is so very tight. That being said, it is a delightful puzzle. And just playing the solo version of the game, I have truly enjoyed just the, I don't want to say thinkiness, that's not really a term, but the level of thought you have to put into playing this game reminds me of uh, a game very dear to my heart, Robinson Crusoe. You, you, in Robinson Crusoe, you're fighting to survive and you need all these various things and you never quite have enough time to get them all. So you have to prioritize. Am I going to get food? Am I going to get weapons? Am I going to get shelter? In, in Pax Transhumanity, you're looking at everything big picture wise. And so to be able to implement an idea from the market, you have to have a cube on it. You have to have it syndicated. So you have to think, okay, I need to I need to pay for this. Well, how do I pay for this? Well, I have to manage my finances on my own personal player board. And oh, how do I how do I even make this idea viable? Well, I have to have it researched. And to do that, I have to have a worker in that sphere and he has to be a, a certain type of worker, a thinking worker, and he a scientist, so to speak, and he has to be able to do this. And I need to be able to move these ideas over to my own player board so I can have a think tank. So now these types of ideas are viable to me. And so now I can go out and commercialize these ideas. And now when I commercialize them, uh, I can make, I can obtain patents and put them over here into, into the global progress. It's just very, very complicated uh, for being a small box game, for having very few components. And it's, it, it seems like a madman made this game, but it's, it works. And it pleases me to see a game that has so few components come together in such a in such a interconnected. I don't want to say eloquent because that's overused, but it's it's very thoughtful. Let me just put it that way. And I'll be interested in, in playing this game with other players to see how it works multiplayer. But right now, I am thoroughly enjoying the solo uh, game of it. Would you enjoy this game? Well, do you like complex games? Uh, do you like games that you're not uh, able to really banter back and forth with the other people at the table and you're having to focus solely on the game and think approximately three or four turns ahead and you're able to think on the fly sometimes when someone comes up and messes up your move? Are you that type of person? Do reading rule books and watching videos how to play a game and then coming to understand what the game is exactly about and how to play it and the strategies behind it. If that type of thing, uh, well, if that tickles you, then uh, yeah, Pax Transhumanity is going to be up your up your alley. For most people, I think this game is going to be a bit too much. And so I, I'll, I'm, I'm going to be interested in see how Enrique and Gabi uh, respond to this. So I'm looking forward to giving it a shot with them when uh, when all this mess is finally contained. Uh, speaking of Phil, uh, Phil and Matt Uckland, the guys that uh, make these PAX games, uh, I got to thinking about various other designers who have a large catalog of games where their games are, often have their own flavor. Kind of like Uwe Rosenberg games. Here recently, a lot of Uwe's games have always had this Tetramino, Tetris-type puzzle, and it's always about farming and resources and feature people type. It's interesting that board game designers 
tend to be I tend to think of them like as movie directors. You can look at their game and know, oh, this is this was made by so and so. This is a Vital Lacerda. Just like in some movies, you can watch a movie and go, oh, this is obviously a Quentin Tarantino or or something of that nature. You can tell the work from the director. There have been a lot of board game designers that have a large catalog. Stefan Field comes to mind. Uh, here this year in 2020, The Castles of Tuscany is one of his upcoming games, and it's purported to be very similar to his 2011 game, which is held as being one of the greatest board games of all time. The very ugly, the very topish, The Castles of Burgundy. And so Stefan Feld has fans, people who love his games, who buy his games, who really enjoy his games. I'm not a big Stefan Feld fan. Uh, it, just the same can be said with Uwe Rosenberg. There are some Uwe Rosenberg games I, gr- I really enjoy, but others are kind of flat for me. And so the same is true. Martin Wallace, I love Martin Wallace. I love most of the games he puts out. Vital Assort is kind of hit and miss for me. And so it's often you find these designers and you get to learn one of their games and then you go down this path of playing and playing more of their games. Now that you've got one of them down, you really get to see the mindset behind the designer. And I'm really looking forward to playing more of these PAX games. Like I said, PAX Premier, the third edition, I've got that coming. And I have Greenland, which another uh, PAX-type game, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So I want to get to see if I'm trying to ex- expand my mind into the Uclands and their... Uh, their way of playing games so if you're like me you're probably spending a lot of time alone and maybe you're playing more games on your computer or your app or your phone i recently out of desperation broke out brass on my android android and realized how much i enjoy the implementation of brass i think you can get it on your iphone so as well brass is one of my favorite games well, it is my favorite game, the new edition, but this app is of the old game of Brass, so the rules are slightly different, but the AI in it is very, very tough. It doesn't give you any breaks, and I really enjoy playing the old edition of Brass on my Android phone. It works well even on my cheap S7. So if you're looking for uh, looking to get a board game fix, you ain't got nobody around, and obviously Brass is the way to go. I enjoy that. And... Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm feeling better. This sake's working for me. I might uh, I might come out of this a sake fan of sake. Who's, who's to say? I'm trying to be international. I wonder if we have any listeners in Japan. We have a lot of listeners in a lot of places. Australia, Saudi Arabia, United Kingdom, Greenland. Is it Greenland or Iceland? I get those confused. Iceland's the big one. No, Iceland's the little. I don't know. Iceland, Iceland. That's the one. I get those two confused. The British, we got everybody. But I've never had any interaction with anybody from Japan. If you're a listener and you're in Japan, send us an email. I'd like to know how things are going over there. And like to uh, be educated a little bit more on uh, on this sake thing. This is good. This is really good. Well, I missed everybody. And I'm glad that I, yeah, I'm glad to be alive. As, as I'm glad that all of our fans are are doing well, too. So everybody hang in there and uh, wash your hands and, and uh, peace out. That's what the cool kids say. They say stuff like that. Like, hey, hit me on the, 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 the Twitter. And now, uh, yeah. How do you get? Okay. <laughs>